Eli, Eli Wieso, a Holocaust survivor, begins a book, a, a book he wrote and published in 1964 called The Gates of the Forest. He starts that book with a story. And he tells the story about a great rabbi who had experienced and saw misfortune, misfortune threatening the Jews. And so in, when such occasions occurred, it was his custom to go into a forest, to light a fire, and to say a prayer. And whenever he did this, this misfortune would be avoided and his people would be saved. A disciple of his many, many years later also experienced a time when the Jewish people were threatened again and faced with uh, misfortune. So he then followed his master. He went to the forest and found the spot in the forest. And he said a prayer. He said, I do not remember how to light the fire, but I can say the prayer, and that should be, we hope, sufficient. And it saved his people. And then decades later, there was another rabbi who uh, his people facing misfortune and persecution and survival. Of, he then uh, goes to the forest and he goes to that spot and he says to God, I do not remember how to light the fire, I do not remember what the prayer is, but I pray, O oh God, that this may be sufficient to save my people. And then, many, many years later, her people threatened a rabbi, remembered, and she sat in her chair and her head in her hands, and she prayed to God, and she said, Oh God, uh, we need you to save our people, but I do not know where the spot in the forest will be or how to light the fire or how to say the prayer. But I pray telling the story will be sufficient to save my people. And it saved her people. Eli Wiesel states, God loves human beings because God loves stories. I love that statement because Wiesel is so right when he connects how being human, how our salvation is often rooted in telling stories. How stories are a meaningful way in which we construct our lives and understand who we are and how to navigate ourselves through those lives. We tell stories all the time about ourselves, about others. In fact, our life is filled with telling stories. I know if I'm walking down the street and I bump into an old friend I haven't found in a while, what I often do is we'll go get a cup of coffee and we'll sit down and what do we do? But we tell stories about what's happened to us, about where we are, about who we are. I know at the end of the day when coming home from work that often at dinner we'll sit down with my wife and what do we do at dinner but tell stories about what happened to us this day. I know when I talk to my kids on the phone. I'm eager to hear the stories of what's going on with them and what's happening. Stories permeate our lives. Stories are the way we make sense of the world and those things around us. I know we find ourselves in this political divided partisan season that really what we're struggling with in some ways, are different narratives about what's happening in the world. Two stories that seem to be in conflict with each other, and that's really, if you think about it, by an argument with uh, my spouse or with anyone else, often it's because our stories 
don't match. And we're trying to find a common story to connect us all. And the power recently in our society, in our communities, uh, discussions and challenges around racism, mistreatment of certain people because of the color of their skin, uh, because of the origin of their country, in many ways we are only aware of that because we've begun to finally listen to their stories. Stories we may find challenging to accept or to believe are true. Stories are how we navigate ourselves through the world and how we understand ourselves in relation to that world. We seek a common story. So it's not surprising that parables at their heart are stories and that Jesus uses stories as a primary way for us to understand who God is and who we are in relationship to God and how we are to understand ourselves and what we are to be about. The stories, the parables of Jesus as we enter the parable zone are invitations to see the world maybe in a different way, a different dimension. In fact, most of the parables Jesus says to us often conflict with our own stories we create to make sense of the world. So I would posit to you this morning that as we enter the parable zone, that is, is an invitation into encountering a story that we're going to find a little disconcerting. That's going to ask us to change our perspective and maybe even be transformed. Because the truth is, it is only through stories that we connect with God's kingdom and with each other. And this story is as odd as they come. Jesus says the kingdom of God is like a landowner who goes out early in the morning to look for workers for his vineyard. And he, he finds these folks and he sends them out after agreeing to a, a very generous daily wage and they go forth. And then the story continues. He comes out again at 9 o'clock and seeks out and finds these workers. He does that at noon, at 3 o'clock, and even at 5 o'clock. Going out, identifying folks who can work in the vineyard. So when the time comes to pay the wages, he begins, and this is when we begin to glimpse a, a little oddness to this story, he begins with the last first, those who had only worked about an hour. And he pays them the same wage he had agreed to pay the workers he hired early in the morning. And the same for those who he hired at 3 o'clock and at noon and at 9 o'clock. Until finally we come to those who have been working all day long in the scorching sun and they are anticipating a big windfall. And to their surprise and to their chagrin, he pays them the very same amount he paid those who had only worked for an hour. And that is not surprising that they begin to complain. These last who worked only for an hour are paid the same amount as those of us who have worked all day long in the scorching sun working in your vineyard. Now, I, I know I've mentioned to you before it's a temptation when reading we're hearing these stories and parables to really focus on associating certain characters, for instance, the landowner with God, uh, the workers uh, with our own human experience. It is often common for us to associate characters, and 
And that's, that's a very possible interpretation in this story. Truth be told, uh, this idea of God's generosity, God's grace, uh, challenging our sense of fairness is, is an interesting and, and powerful interpretation of the story. And I would imagine that most of you, as we heard this story this morning, most of you more, more, most likely identified probably not with the workers who even got hired at 9 o'clock. or noon. You did for sure didn't identify with a worker at 5 o'clock. Most of us probably see ourselves as the workers who started early in the morning. After all, we're Presbyterians, right? But that's a mistake, I think, to solely focus on these characters. That is a particular challenge for us, um, in part because I think what we ought to pay attention to in this story are the actions. And in particular, the actions of the landowner. There's an oddness to what the landowner does. In other words, it seems odd that he would go out, maybe not odd that he goes out early in the morning, but that he keeps coming back. He keeps returning to find more workers. Either it's a really big crop or this landowner loves hiring folks. But he goes back at 9, at 12, at 3, at 5, and what's interesting about the story, as Jesus tells us, is he is looking out, he notices these people seeking work. And he's always inviting them to join in the work in the vineyard. And I've often wondered about those workers, uh, who they were. And why they weren't there at early in the morning to be hired first thing. Maybe their alarm didn't go off and they slept in. Maybe there are people who aren't hired for certain reasons. Maybe the color of their skin or their immigration status. Or some reason they haven't been hired by someone else. But this landowner goes and without hesitation invites them to join in the work in the vineyard. And I totally get, in some ways, the resentment of those who've worked all day because it challenges, this story challenges a story we tell about our world that makes sense of our world. The most common story we have is you you work uh, for a good day's wage, you put in a good day's work, and you should be paid what's fair. That's how the world works, right? I do this, and I should get this in return. And if someone doesn't do this, God knows they shouldn't be getting this in return. That's our story about how we construct the world, about who is first and who is least. People who are first deserve to be first, right? because they've done the right things, they've worked hard, they deserve to be first and the last, ah, the last are probably there because they're lazy or because, well, whatever reason. And Jesus' parable challenges that perception. He challenges that idea, that story that is so, I, I would argue, is so central to how we construct the world around us, how we think about the world, that it is very unsettling and in an interesting way actually ticks us off. Now, part of the story that, that, that I find interesting is how angry those workers are who worked all day. I get it, but I don't get it. Because in the kingdom of God, the landowner's generosity is something to be celebrated, yet these workers who got what they agreed to are resentful of other people's good fortune. Because they didn't think they deserved it. The last don't get good things, only the first. And Jesus' story challenges 
that story we tell ourselves all day long. He very even ends with the last shall be first and the first last. So we're invited to find our hope, our salvation, our sufficiency in the story about God's reality, God's dimension in which the last become first and the first last. In which God's love and grace is so generous it is shared with everyone no matter who deserves it. And I wonder if we tell that story about our world, about our lives, if we tell that story over and over again and see that reality in the story and in our lives, how much our world would change. Sometimes I've wondered what is the work in the vineyard that they're being called to and, and what strikes me is maybe the, what Jesus is speaking about and implying in that work in the vineyard is the work we're all called to, which is to create a more whole world, to, to strive, to create justice and peace, goodness, wholeness for all of God's children and for all of creation. In that the story Jesus is telling Here in this parable zone is an invitation for us to work together and to see the world in such a sense of generosity and abundance that we are joyful when the last are lifted up. That we are joyful when those who have little are given everything. We are invited to see the world that way, to believe that story, and to believe in God's grace abundantly each and every day. Amen.